Hey YouTube, what's up? How are you? It's been, it's been, it's been, it's been a minute. Actually, it hasn't been a minute. I hope you been enjoying the content. Uh, I wanted to do a quick review of this game. Ha uh ha, -huh, what is it though? Uh, well, right now it's out on Steam for early access. It comes out on the 20th. It's called Remnant from the Ashes. You might have seen the other sponsored gameplay from when I flew out to, uh, I believe it's called San Diego. I, actually, I think it was San Francisco. I can't remember uh, to play the game. Um, but I wanted to kind of give you a deeper review now that it's been out and a lot of people have gotten a chance to play it. Uh, and I'm getting asked how the game is all the time by chat. So I'm doing this so that way that the question can be answered, um, in, in full length instead of just me saying one sentence on stream that does do it justice. Okay. So what is Remnant? Uh, I think a nice one second snippet to describe or 10 second snippet to describe Remnant. It, it is a procedurally generated dungeon crawler. That's ga that gameplay closest matches what you would think Dark Souls with guns would be. Um, it's incredibly challenging. It's got, and I'm on normal difficulty and it's tough. Uh, it goes up to impossible difficulty, which is truly insane. Um, and it has a lot of progression systems that you're so, probably going to be very similar with. She hasn't said much. Hopefully um, we can make if you've played uh, the Souls games specifically, there are drops in the game, but the main focus is not looting and shooting. It's getting a gun, like there's only one coach gun, right? It's called coach gun. And then you, <laughs> it's called coach gun, it's right here. And then you improve these weapons. Um, you know, you have deeper stat trees over here uh, by, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna put everything into that. Um, by getting drops from the world um, and then improving it, uh, you know, by spending cash and materials that you find. So right now we've got iron and now that coach gun is plus five in typical Souls-esque fashion, uh, we have to get a new material at a lower amount. Uh, so, in addition to having guns, your character has abilities, okay, or weapon mods, which are tied to the gun. So right now I have something called Mender's Aura, and I also have Mantle of Thorns. These are skills that my, uh, <clears throat> my guy can use, but the way that I build up the skill is by using the weapons. So there's this nice cyclical gameplay between using the weapons to do damage, which you obviously have to do to progress, and using these skills and decking yourself out with uh, weapon mods that allow you to best approach a situation. Uh, this one that I got earlier, Mantle of Thorns, is like a melee retribution aura that is incredibly effective against some of the big tanky enemies that you're going to run into in the game. Um, the whole game focuses around you, you're a little hunter guy. You try and cross the ocean in a shitty boat. It capsizes on you. And then you kind of fight your way through these enemies called the root uh, to this Ward 13 area. And then you get started. Um, the world's filled with checkpoints. The overworld and everything that you visit is randomly generated. Um, I was incredibly lucky during the first part of the game because I got this item. It's called the pocket watch. Um, this spawns in a certain map tile set that has an old man in a helicopter. But so for me, my first playthrough, I thought, oh, shit, this is <laughs> this is great. I'm this is cool. Everyone gets this awesome item. But it turns out that it, he doesn't always show up for people, uh, which is kind of cool. You also get all this other stuff that you can enhance your armor against various, you know, different types of damage. Uh, the armor levels up the same way as your weapons. There's a lot to it. And then in addition to all of this stuff, which you're very used to, you're going to have this tree, which is called traits. Uh, traits are just overall ability boosts. Um, you know, whether it's range damage reduction, stamina, power mod generation, which is how quickly I get my skills back. Or this, which I found a, a secret that chat gave me uh, called Elder Knowledge that is a bonus to your uh, XP increase. One of the things or two of the things that I think is very differentiating on this game from like what a lot of people who are looking at and like, oh, it's a Souls game. Well, first of all, it's made by the people who made Darksiders, so it's not a FromSoft game. Two, there's a couple of changes that I noticed right off the bat that I think I like a lot more. And if you're a fan of shooters, you'll like them a lot more too. In Dark Souls, if you die to a boss, you have the run back. It takes five fucking minutes. Sometimes you're gonna die to trash mods. It's gonna be super annoying and you're gonna hate it. But in Remnant, every time you fight a boss, you come into an area where you're going to respawn right in front of the boss, and then you're going to keep, you know, you get to just jump right back into the encounter, and it's a much faster fight. Um, I am a huge fan of that experience uh, because it means that you get right back into the action right away. Um, 
in addition to that, your progression, your growth happens constantly and you can't lose it. So if you're stuck in a boss fight, you can actually just smash your head against that boss fight as much as you want and you are slowly going to grow your trait rankings while you are still getting drops in the fight of iron or galvanized iron and scrap. So you can just farm that boss to make your guy more powerful instead of running backwards and re-experiencing old content. Um, these are two primary improvements for this game that I think are absolutely incredible. And if you're a shooter fan, you like things to be quick. So you're going to be hopping back in and out of the game um, and out of encounters a lot more quickly. I'm going to try and get into some fights now so you can sort of see how it works. Uh, the system's pretty simple. You have a primary weapon, a secondary weapon. You can equip whatever you want in these slots. They're not um, nothing's locked in to one of the slots. Uh, another big change that I like is everything is based off of one button. So if you aren't aiming, it's a melee attack. If you are aiming, it's one of your other weapons, <clears throat> which is really cool. And it adds a lot of fluidity to the combat that I personally wasn't expecting the first time I played it. Uh, the world is also riddled with secrets. I had chat guiding me yesterday so that I could find things like the helicopter man um, and that trait that I showed you that increased my experience. Uh, <laughs> it's a it's a good it's a it is a, a fun time there's plenty of checkpoints in the world uh your your time between checkpoints isn't really that bad um and another really exciting since it's procedurally generated or something i really enjoy is that while you're running through the game uh you know the enemies that you fight and the groupings that you fight might be different this is also great when you want to hop into co-op play uh and this is new uh, that guy just got one shot, uh, which is kind of a newer experience to me is if I go back and join one of my friends who's maybe just getting started and they're in this first section, their experience th through this first area, their procedural map might be different than me. Let's find out what the strange coin is all about. Um, oh, uh, oh, it's in the inventory or I think it's probably a quest item. There it is. Um, their map might be different than mine. They might have different tile sets, different enemies, um, and different mini bosses and bosses. The first boss that I fought in this game in the sewers, uh, there's actually three variants that can spawn. There's the one that you saw me fight uh, during the reveal event, which is a big scary guy with a, you know, with a sword. And there's two others. Uh, so it also gives you a chance to fight new bosses and maybe get those boss drops, um, you know, because you didn't get a chance at them during the first time. Uh, I'd also like to point out that my chat is now going crazy that that's a strange coin, which means Zer is now confirmed in the game, and I can't wait. Speaking of uh, who's excited about uh, Solar Week, maybe. Who knows? Um, so that's a little bit behind that. The combat feels really nice. Uh, one of the things that I had a concern about with this game was I wasn't sure... Okay, so I wasn't sure if the combat would feel challenging since, you know, in Dark Souls, one of the things you just are like, oh, I just wish I had a gun. I'd shoot these things in the face. They've done a great job balancing enemies uh, around your abilities and creating really challenging encounters for you. As you can see, I'm almost dead. And these are just <laughs> random mods, mobs. It's the first time I've set this, fought this group of enemies and I'm not used to all of them having so many guns. Oh, I don't want to get root rot. Um, so you have this elite guy here. He can be a different group of things. He just murdered me with his creepy eyes. Um, <laughs> and we're going to have to hop back into it. You can see how quickly the game puts you back into combat. <laughs> Dying intentionally. You know it. It's a bro man video. Um, hopping back into the game and back into the combat quickly is awesome. It feels great. Um... And like I said, you get to keep all your progression and you learn the encounters and you move forward. And in that way, it sort of feels a lot like it's, uh, you know, standardized RPG. Uh, but these enemies, like this creepy multi-eyed magician guy that I'm fighting, um, he won't always be that. You might not always be in this map. Uh, you know, at the reveal, they talked about the procedurally generated nature of the game. And I wasn't really 100% on how they were going to deliver that. Oh, my God. <clears throat> I wasn't really 100% on the how they were going to deliver that experience. Oh, tiny guys. Oh, bombs. <laughs> this is tough. I wasn't sure how they were going to deliver that experience. Uh, given the, you know, nature of most things when I hear procedurally generated, it doesn't really end up being what I would hope for. And then you have experiences like, you know, 
uh, Binding of Isaac and stuff like that that are obviously much more scaled down, but really do deliver that oh, level of experience. So, mm, leave me alone. <laughs> I will, I can safely say that the folks at Remnant have really delivered everything that you would hope on a procedurally generated shooter. Uh, the world feels unique. The story's actually incredibly engaging, which is, that's, that's an elite guy, I think. Oh, and he almost killed me, but I'm fine. Um, the story's actually really engaging, which wasn't something I was entirely expecting, but you really want to figure out what's going on in this creepy-ass Lovecraftian horror game. <clears throat> Why is the world being taken over by all this stuff? You know, you're immediately thrust into the middle of this already existing uh, sort of conflict last, last ditch effort between the people in Ward 13 um, and the rest of the game uh, and all of the things that are trying to kill you. It's up to three players in co-op. Uh, the game scales up in difficulty with enemy health and things like that, the more people that you put in. Um, the exciting part about it being non-linear, as I said before, is I can go back and replay some of the earlier parts in the game, and it's still going to be a benefit to me because I'm going to get experience. I might grab some new items or new equipment that I wouldn't have gotten during my first playthrough because things are laid out differently. Um, and it feels fun to help out buds. Uh, co-op is just pretty simple drop-in or uh, drop-in co-op, drop-out co-op from the central hub that you saw me have or enter in the beginning. Uh, overall, uh, I know I said this at the reveal, uh, and maybe some of you were like, <laughs> well, we sponsored, so you had to say nice things. You never do. Um, overall at the reveal, uh, my opinion has not changed. This game is really fantastic. Uh, if you're looking for an adrenaline pumping souls style experience with a few tweaks to the genre that really are improvements in my opinion, if you're a fan of third person shooters, if you like character building, if you like RPGs, or if you want like a nice challenging game to play remnant from the ashes, absolutely delivers on all of those fronts. I highly recommend picking it up. It's an early access right now. You can pay for, I think it's $40 for early access, or you can wait for it to launch and it's $40 then. And for the price tag, which is not a full, you know, AAA game price tag, I really feel like you can't go wrong. So, <laughs> there's my quick little review, uh, quick and dirty review of Remnant from the Ashes. Thanks for watching. Uh, you know, if you're watching this video the day that it comes out, I'm live on Twitch right now playing it. So you can hop on over and see a little bit more of the story and watch me play like not garbage because I'm not, oh, what are you? Um, I really don't like that guy. Uh, <laughs> you can watch me play while I'm focused. Uh, and then, you know, yeah, we'll have a good time. Thanks for watching. Make sure to rate, comment, subscribe, share this with a friend, whatever it is you want to do. I love you and I'll talk to you later. Peace.